Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, and it's brought to you by Belly Up Sports, and we are so proud to be part of the Belly Up family. Oh, today is going to be a great show. Main course today, we have two defensive coordinators that could be on the short list for our new head coach, Dan Campbell. We have a lot of other stuff to get to, so right now I'm going to bring in my main man, the man of steel himself, Kurt Steele. What up, though? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the prowl. Your home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. And as always, you can check us out weekdays, 11 a.m. right here on our channel for the premieres of our show. You can join the chat. If you really want to get your comments right up front, you can join our super chat and pay a little bit extra to get your comments right up front where you want them to be. And as always, you are welcome to join the family, subscribe to the channel and comment on the videos, like the video, share the videos. All of this helps us get this content to more Lions fans just like yourself. For more content, more sports, go over to bellyupsports.com and you can check out a myriad of podcasts and they have some hard-hitting journalistic articles over there for you to read. So for all your sports needs, head over to BillyOsports.com. Let's get this thing started right now. Let's go. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're going to go into the main course right now. So for more on Greg Williams, I'm going to go to my man, Kurt. All right, Mr. Greg Williams, 62 years of age. He went to college at Northwest Missouri State. He has been married twice and has three wonderful children. All right, here is the biggest thing for most people that remember Greg Williams was the Saints bounty scandal. All right. On March 2nd, 2012, it was revealed that during Williams tenures as the Saints defensive coordinator, he ran an illegal bounty fund, which paid players for causing injuries to opponents that would result in those players leaving the game. The NFL found that Williams and as many as 27, ooh, that's a lot of players, Dang. 27 Saints defensive players were mm. involved in the scheme. And an mm. unidentified, oh, yes, yeah, that's, that's the, the whole defense. The unidentified Saints player first alerted the NFL to the scheme in the 2010 season. Williams was room, was summoned to the NFL headquarters after an investigation concluded mid February. He initially denied any involvement, of course, but recanted <laughs> and admitted, you know, it's, it's it, it ain't a scandal until you get caught doing something, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, you ain't right. do it till you get caught, right? Uh, but recanted and admitted everything in a meeting with NFL commissioner roger goodell he issued a statement apologizing for his role saying that he had known it was wrong from the start now this is kind of some old school stuff i mean i know coaches back in the day did this thing where they had a little kitty if you put somebody out the game then you know you, you got the money but you know of course that went away a long long time ago on march 21st of 2012 the nfl suspended mr williams indefinitely for conduct detrimental to the league Effective that day in a statement, the NFL said its investigation had found that Williams not only administered the bounty program and occasionally contributed some of his own paper to the bounty pool, <laughs> but also lied to the league and investigators about his role. Consequently, my man was suspended. We're running until the end of the 2012 season at the earliest on February the 3rd, 2012. Uh, Williams was formally, excuse me, 2013, I'm sorry, was formally introduced as the Rams' new visa, new visa coordinator. A little over a month later, on March 21st, Williams was suspended indefinitely uh, for his role, I said 2012, uh, in this bounty scandal and was fired on January the 2nd, 2013, without even working a day for the Los Angeles Rams. Wow. Um, on February uh, 7th, 2013, Williams was reinstated for, by the NFL and was officially hired by the Tennessee Titans as their senior administered uh, assistant defensive coach in an official statement released by the league. Commissioner Roger Goodell cited Williams' acceptance of his responsibility for his role in the bounty gate and pledged to never be involved in such a pay-for-performance system ever again. 
were the main reasons why he were reinstated one year later. Okay, let's kind of look at his coaching experience. Okay, so going back to the 80s, because you know this guy's a little bit old, 62 years old. Yeah. He coached high school at Belton High um, in Texas. And then from 1988 to 1989, he was a Houston University of Houston graduate assistant. In 1990 to uh, 1996, he was the Houston Oilers. That's back when they were back uh, <laughs> back then. While. Yeah, that's the way back then. He was a defensive assistant and special teams and linebacker coordinator. Uh, 1997 to 2000, he was the Tennessee Oilers slash uh, Titans defensive coordinator. 2001 to 2003, he was the Buffalo Bills head coach. So he does have some head coaching experience. So in 2004, 2007, he was the Washington Redskins defensive coordinator and assistant head coach. In 2009, he was the Jacksonville Jaguars. Excuse me, 2008, he was the Jaguars defensive coordinator. In 2009, 2011, he was the Saints defensive coordinator. Of course, he spent a little bit of time with the Rams a day or so uh, as a defensive coordinator. Looking back, you know, in 2013, uh, like we just said, he was a senior assistant defensive coach for the Tennessee Titans. And in 2014 and 2016, this is when he actually really coached uh, as a defensive coordinator for the Los Angeles slash St. Louis Rams before, I mean, well, St. Louis first before they moved to L.A. Uh, and in 2017 to 2018, he was the Cleveland Browns defensive coordinator. Uh, and in 2018, he was the interim head coach as well. And 2019 to 2020, uh, he was the Jets defensive coordinator. He got fired on December the 7th of last year uh, as the Jets defensive coordinator. Uh, his head coaching record, he was an astounding 22 and 35 as a head coach with a uh, uh, the 39, excuse me, 393 uh, percentage uh, for a head coach. But his best season was with the Buffalo Bills where he went in a, a amazing, it was just crazy. He went 500, yeah. eight and eight. Nuts. That okay, is so bananas. <laughs> pros and cons, right? <laughs> okay. Pro, he's cheating. You know, he, he <laughs> employs cheating tactics, which the league has cheated us. So I kind of think, hey, why not? You know, maybe this yeah. will go even. Uh, yeah. But he's 62 years old. He, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so he's a little, he's a little older. He has some head coaching experience, mm -hmm. be it terrible. He has terrible defenses. The New York Jets was a terrible defense. The Cleveland Browns wasn't that great. Um, I, I don't know. I, well, I, I, I will say I will say this um, <laughs> about Mr. Williams. Uh, he was there. He won a Super Bowl with the Saints. He was there. Yeah, he was a defensive coordinator there. when he won a Super Bowl uh, with the Saints. Uh, he was wasn't what what they hang their hat on there though. <laughs> yeah, sure. it, it was. Know. You know they some dude you know actually but Williams. actually but that was the, the but their defense is actually why they won a Super Bowl that year. Yeah, I remember yeah. that yeah. Tracy Porter. Um, Interception yep. for the touchdown was yep. the winning play for the Super Bowl. So he had a pretty decent, a pretty decent uh, run. Now I won't say he's the greatest defensive coordinator ever to walk the face of the earth, but he's he has decent. Experience. Yeah, he has experience and he has a um, a background in helping run the team. So that could be a a, a plus for a younger coach like Dan Campbell. Um, I'm not really so, I'm not sold on Greg Williams at all. I'm not, um, uh, but, but he. He's one of the names experience. that's linked to him. He can yeah. cheat. We need both of those things. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he brought to try to bring some of the old school NFL to, to some new stuff. Cause that's some of the stuff they did back in the early days of the league where it was kind of like um, just kind of passe. I mean, it was just yeah. what they did back then where, you know, Hey, you know, the coach said, you know, you take this player out and I'm gonna give you a little bonus. And that's what they went with. The that's biggest you... disappointment for me when we went to the Patriot Way is we did not cheat like they did. <laughs> I'm yeah, we, yeah, we did. We didn't. Because we didn't video. No, we get cheated all the time. Yeah, Just we didn't videotape people's practices. We didn't. You know, we didn't right. deflate we didn't deflate the balls what, or anything like right. that. We just. We just went about our business the regular way, you and know. See, if you do it that way, it doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah, if you, the old that. adage, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Ain't All trying. right, man, <laughs> who you got, man? Let's, let's talk about Mr. Wade Phillips. I got, you Wade got on Phillips. Him? He's only 73 years old. So oh, he's young. One, one step away from the nursing home. <laughs> um, his college is Houston. They did have them way back then. Uh, his family is a son of a for, he's a son of former NFL coach Bum Phillips. Um, his wife Lori, daughter Tracy, and son Wes 
is the tight end. Uh, Wes is the tight end coach for the Rams. Okay. So his son That's what's is actually a coach for them. Okay. Okay. Fam- went to the family business. Your <laughs> family business. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> went to the University of Houston, where he is a three-year starter at linebacker from 1966 to 1968. Ooh, most of wow. <laughs> He held the record for school assisted tackles at 228 until 2011 when the record was broken by Marcus McGraw, who I have never heard of. You know what, uh, though? Shout out to shout out to Chris Wright. How in the he, heck did he find out that he led the schools in tackles back <laughs> from 66 to 68? Man, that is some great he's such research. A good, he's such a good That's researcher. That's some good research right there, brother. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Phillips began his head coaching career with the Houston Oilers, head coach by his father. He mm. served as linebackers coach in 1976. He coached the dinosaurs. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. He... <laughs> and the defensive line from 1977 to 1980. Wade remained on his father's staff as, as the pair headed for New Orleans. Bum stepped down as the head coach of the struggling Saints team in the late in late 1985, and Wade stepped in as their interim coach. He has coached three Super Bowls, all as defensive coordinator. So he's got wow. some experience. I mean, yep. well, so, so back then, so yeah, he was part. Of, he was part of the Aints back then. He was part of the Aints. He was part he of the Aints. Also, back then. probably part of Noah's crew. <laughs> on the arc. Um, so, nineteen sixty nine Houston grad assistant. This is coaching mm-hmm. experience. 1970-1972, Lucher Stark High School. Just sounds like a stocking. Or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't Defensive know. Defensive coordinator, 1973, 1974, Oklahoma State linebacker coach, 1975, mm-hmm. Kansas defensive line coach, 1976 to 1980, he was with the Houston Oilers as a defensive line coach, 1981 to 1985, and this is nothing to write home about. He was the New Orleans Saints defensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah. 1985, the New Orleans Saints with the bags over their head. Um, mm-hmm. He was their interim head coach. Uh, 1986 to 1988, Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator. 1989 to 1992, Broncos defensive head coordinator. Mm-hmm. Uh, defensive coordinator, sorry. Uh, 1993 to 1994, he was the Denver Broncos head coach. Mm-hmm. 1995 to 1997, he was the Buffalo Bills defensive coordinator. He was the head coach of the Bills in 98 to 2000. The 2002 to 2003, you know, dude, this is going to cause me to, to like have a heart attack or something reading all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 2002 to 2003, he was the Atlanta Falcons defensive coordinator. In 2003, he was the Atlanta Falcons interim head coach from 04 to 06. He was the San Diego Car- Chargers uh, defensive coordinator from 2007 to 2010. Uh, was He was the head coach in Jerry World. For the Dallas Cowboys from 2011 to 2013. He was a defensive coordinator for the Houston Texans. Now, 2013, he was also the interim coach in Houston from 2015 to 2016. He was the Denver Broncos defensive coordinator. You remember that time where he won a Super Bowl uh, in Denver yes. uh, as part of that cr- uh, crew with Gary Kubiak. And in 2017 to 2019, he was the LA Rams defensive coordinator. And in that uh, period he was the defensive coordinator when the Rams went to the Super Bowl that year. Wow. Uh, career winning percentage as a head coach, uh, 83 and 69. That's pretty good, you know, level 500. 36 win percentage, yeah. Uh, Super Bowl champion, uh, and uh, defensive coordinator with the Broncos. You mentioned that 2015 mm-hmm. AP NFL assistant coach of the year. Okay, so pros and cons to Wade Phillips. What do you think? Sir? Now, I think he actually runs a pretty good defense. Um, and I think that Brandon Staley, under his toolage, really became a good defensive coach this year. I think he was able to take him to the next level with some of the, the things that he learned as a coordinator under Wade Phillips. I think he's a better coordinator than he is a head coach. I just think that, you know, he has success as a defensive coordinator. Not my issue with him is uh, – like as always, I'm not, I'm not trying to be an ageist, but he's a little long in the tooth. And is he little. connected to the to the game as it is played today? I don't know because he just was a coordinator in 2019. Yeah, he so, was, I mean, and they and, and the Rams had a good defense. Now I will say a heck of a defense. Now I will say this: Staley took them from the defense they were under Phillips to the top ranked defense in the yes, league this year. Yes. Got it. Got to agree with that. Got to agree with that. But. 
it was some of what Wade Phillips had taught him to. I yeah, it has to be under his tutelage, you know, and and Wade uh, taught him to be a defensive coordinator. But Staley was on the offensive side of the ball as well. So a lot of people don't really know that about Brandon Staley. He he coached on the offensive side until this year where he took over for Phillips. Wow. All right, guys, let's get to your comments in the comment card section today. And Kurt, you have the first one today. Okay, let's go with um, the uh, Coyote 5.0 says, it's funny how people talk about what people have said and done in the past in recent or recent past while they have most likely said and done worse thing or similar things themselves. The hypocrisy is rampant these days. Oh, now he's talking gosh. about uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Marlo Alter. Uh, he's talking about my dessert yesterday. That's just, that's just was uh, very um, watch what you say, you know, and it's like, why would you even volunteer to write that article knowing what you have done in the past? It was that uh, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And Marlo, my man, you definitely was throwing some rocks, some boulders in a glass house yesterday. All right, let's go to Steve-O. He says, I think the choice of coordinators is going to make or break this hire. And I totally agree with him. I, I think that there mm -hmm. has to be some experience with the coordinators, mm -hmm. uh, given that Dan Campbell has never called to play in his life. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's 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 uh, been under under Sean Payton. You know, even when, you know, Sean Payton was out or whatever, you know, he's never really been the, the head guy as a as a head coach, except for down in Miami. Now, I will say this. He did call plays down in Miami. He didn't do that very, you know, didn't do that well down there. But, right. you know, I don't think he did. Did he call plays? He was the interim head coach. I don't know if he called plays, but he was yeah, the head coach. that's what I mean. I don't think he called plays. I think that was the offensive and defensive coordinator. That called I mean, so, I really, to be honest with you, some head coaches don't call plays. Yeah, and that's I mean, fine. They, I mean, if they you manage have the team. Defensive coordinator and a good offensive coordinator. Yeah. So they know what the heck they're doing. I, I hope he. I hope he does do. Uh, I, I mean, Steve was correct. His coordinators are going to make his break his success in the in the Motor City. All right, Art, Art Thompson says terrible hire. S O L same old Lions. What is Campbell good at? Uh, how can he help the team get better aside from being a rah rah guy? Uh, can't locate a coach that actually has a skill that stands out and be a decent leader shaking his head. I mean, your opinion, that's your opinion. I mean, there's a lot of people that share his opinion. Yeah, there, there is a lot of people are not liking either hire uh, Brad Holmes or uh, Dan Campbell. Um, yeah. I think we got some news on that later. Yeah. Uh, it's, on it's one of those things where I will say this. Um, we haven't had a rah rah guy in Detroit for a while. So, uh, and the last rah rah guy we had, I mean, he, he wasn't the, he wasn't the greatest head coach, but he did a decent job, and that was uh, Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz, I think. I think. Uh, who says who says that um, your head coach has to be an X's and O's guy? It, he doesn't. It doesn't. The thing is, if he has good coordinators around him, mm -hmm. he can do his job to motivate the team and motivate the players. You know. Yeah. His job is going to be to manage timeouts, mm -hmm. you know, those type of things, how when to challenge a play. And stuff like that. I mean, and I also mean, to get his coordinators to make adjustments. Yeah. And, and one thing, look at one guy that has success, sustained success, is um, Harborough out there in Baltimore. He's yeah. not a big exit in those guys. He was, a, nope. he was a special teams coordinator and became right. the head coach. He's yeah. not an exit in those guys. He, he's a most, I've never seen, I've never seen him with a chart on the sideline. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but oh, he Robert. has. Oops. Yeah, but he has to stay in success uh, as a head coach. That's true. L. Robert Kendall, a fantastic move uh, getting Watson might be with his approval required. It's hard to see him coming to Detroit. Are there any connections for him uh, here? I can't see it happening. Um, I can't either, to be honest. No, nah, that's a pipe dream. Too much, <laughs> too much to give up for him in the first place. But also uh, coming here, he wouldn't have a choice if he's traded. I don't think he has a no trade clause, so he'd have to come here yeah. anyway. But it could be a situation. If he's traded, he's traded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, but yeah. It, it could be a bad situation if he does get traded here and doesn't want to be here. You bring up a really good point there. Mm -hmm. All right. Nick Russo says, every year we talk about training down and it never happens. Move on. <laughs> you know what, though? All right. I will say that, Nick, you are absolutely correct. We never trade down. But never. 
We have a new well, we GM. We talk about so it all the time. We have a new GM. And actually, the Rams were one of those individual teams that did make some moves and trade down from time to time. So you may be a new day coming with uh, with Brad Holmes. We'll see. And I do agree with you there. I think that there's some things that he's got planned, but – We'll mm-hmm. see how that goes. Leonard Mikala vlogs. I can't get on board with going O line unless we trade down. If we didn't uh, just extend Decker, then maybe the offense has been okay. The defense can't stop anything. Nope. Well, okay. best player available guy. If that offensive tackle is there and we can put him in the right tackle position and we solidify that offensive line, fine. We're not going to that- do this in one draft. Yeah, that young, it's not going to be done in one. Draft. Nah, that that young fella out of uh out of Alabama is, he's a definitely a guy to look at at number. You know, depends on who's available at number seven, but he's a guy to look at definitely if he's there, if he's around. Yeah, if he's around, you got to grab him. Uh, let's okay. go to the Detroit Lions news and rumors now. And I'm sorry, did you did I? Oh, I was I up? was I was telling you to go ahead, go ahead, man. Ah, you got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And now we're going to go to the Detroit Lions news and rumors. And the report is the Lions GM Brad Holmes has a bold plan for the roster and Mike Disner to help on the operational side. This article is by Jeremy Reisman, Pride of Detroit. Uh, In order to get the GM closer to the true scouting job that he is, well, he's supposed to do, I'm paraphrasing some of it. The Lions are putting VP Mike Disner in charge of much of the football operation ends of things. So it means Holmes won't have to worry about managing areas like travel, nutrition, training, and equipment. Mm -hmm. Albert Breer wrote this on Monday that Disner has been with the organization for two years, primarily serving as the team's capologist or the team's cap guru. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's also spent 12 years as previous. uh, He has 12 years of previous experience in the NFL, including six years with the with uh, Cardinals in a similar role. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. he was their uh, capologist, but I think he did a little more over there. Yeah, than just that. And he's Back one of the to, best in the league at at the cap salary cap. He is one of the best guys out there. He is. He is. He's very good at what he does. In fact, one big moment in, in the interview came when Holmes asked uh, by the Detroit Brass to go through each of the four GMs and five head coaches he'd worked with and identify the one thing he learned from them, and the one he didn't, and the one he didn't like that he would do different that things that he would do differently than them. One by one, Holmes calmly and logically knocked those out and giving a cutting, honest assessment of the Lions roster and a bold plan for what he'd do if he landed the job. I would love to hear the bold plan. I, I, I'm so sick of the mystery in Detroit. That some of yeah. this, that's mm-hmm. really my pet peeve. Yeah. Um, you don't have bold. to say, well, I'm going after this guy and I'm going to trade for that guy. No. What bold kind plan, of get better. do you want? What kind of defense do you want? What kind of identity do you want? Bold yeah. plan, get better fast. That's the fact. <laughs> bold for me. Win a Super Bowl. That'd be pretty bold. Yeah, that's pretty bold. But I, you know what, though? It, it tells you that he, he has a – he can think quickly on his feet. And, yeah. you know, to be asked that and he can go one by one um, – calmly and logically and knock them out you know he's a guy who can uh, make decisions uh fast and he's honest you know he's upfront with what he says you know if he says you know hey you guys suck right now we need to get better we need to hear that we not we don't need to hear that we got a bunch of potential if he says we suck right now and we need to get better that's what we need we need somebody like that he's right (laughs) yeah (laughs) if he said that if he said that all right then next up we have seven Possible replacement for Matthew Stafford. Now, this is from the sideline report. This is um, written by Steve Monax, and he says uh, seven replacement possible. One guy we just talked about, we talked about the last couple of days, Deshaun Watson, the quarterback of the Houston Texans, Dak Prescott, or Andy Dalton Andy from the Dalton. Dallas <laughs> Cowboys. Wow. Here's one that's really, I'm really shaking my head at Philip Rivers, you know. Uh, from the Colts, I mean, he's, I mean, you talking about Stafford being old? Wow. Um, James Winston with his um his new site, you know, he finally got the LASIK from the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Uh, Cam Newton. I think they want to keep him though. I, I think they will. He threw that bomb touchdown uh last week. So, uh, Cam Newton uh, coming over from the New England Patriots. Um, you know, that's a one year there. I don't really consider, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, I'm just going to be. I. I don't really associate him with the Patriots. I associate him with the Carolina Panthers. That's just me. I'm just sorry. And the first round draft pick of quarterback uh, in the 2021 draft. 
those are some of the people who could replace. You got a myriad of quarterbacks, if available. You know, you got Trask. You have uh, Mac uh, Jones coming out of um, out of Alabama. Uh, Justin Fields, uh, Trey Lance. Um, what's the other guy? Zach um, Wilson. Uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks that's you know, and uh, rumored to be looking at. Yeah, so those are some of the guys that could take Matthew Stafford place. You know, there's all these rumors that, you know, he I wants to go, he, he wants to stay. Um, I'm not sure that the Lions move him. I think be what he's you. doing here is he's trying to find bridge quarterbacks. You know, yeah. in some cases, like Phillip Rivers would be a bridge quarterback. For me, uh, Dak wouldn't be. Deshaun wouldn't be. But, you know, maybe mm-hmm. even Jameis Winston. Cam Newton definitely would be a bridge Yeah, Cam Newton, his, his career is – and he's not an old guy. I mean, but you know, he's kind of like Stafford. He's not a he's not an old guy. Um, yeah, but you can see his play. But his game, the way he plays the game, you can see the the downturn in his game. Mm-hmm. NFL free agency 2021. This is from PFF mm-hmm. and Brad Spielberger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A free agent. Uh, each team cannot afford to lose, and their take is it's Kenny Galladay. Wow. Uh, the Lions' top two receiving weapons, Galladay and Marvin Jones, are set to hit free agency this offseason. The new head coach and general manager in Detroit should make their it's a top priority to retain Galladay. Uh, Galladay, sorry. Uh, among all wide receivers who have seen at least 20 contested targets over the last two seasons, Galladay converted contestants' targets into reception at a fourth best rate in the NFL. Ooh, mm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, there's just, uh, we had a given an argument against. <laughs> so <laughs> they're given the argument for. All right. Yep. Kurt, what do you got? All right. Um, with, you know, with, with Galladay, I, I, I really do like uh, him. You know, I'm a proponent. You know, I've always said that I would rather keep Galladay. I know that sometimes it won't be fiscally responsible for the Lions to re-sign him. But I just like him. And if I'm coming off an injury year, maybe we can get a, a hometown discount from Kenny Galladay because he didn't play that well. I mean, didn't play that many games this season. All right, the last one. Guy we just kind of talked about. Quarterback Justin Fields out of Ohio State declares for the 2021 NFL Draft. He will be one of the hottest names on the market. Now, this is from Yard Barger uh, coming from Aaron Walsh, who wrote the article. Um, I would definitely say that he will be one of the most sought-after quarterbacks in the upcoming draft. My thing with him is that Ohio State quarterbacks don't do well in the league. They don't That's do the truth. Well they the don't league. do well in the league. They do not do well uh, in the league. Now, he if he was coming from his original college, coming out of Georgia, um, I would say, okay, yeah, all right. But you know, but the last quarterback to, to play well out of the University of Georgia is who? Matthew Stafford. That's so. right. That's right. Okay, guys. Uh, the the uh, question of the day today is. Who would you like to see as the offensive or defensive coordinator? We kind of went through the defensive coordinator today, so we'll keep it defensive coordinator today. Why don't we do that? Mm -hmm. So who would you like to have as the the defensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions under head coach Dan Campbell? That is going to be the question of the day today. It could be Wade Phillips. It could be, you know, the people that we mentioned today, Greg Williams. Mm -hmm. We'll see about that. But um, that's the question of the day, guys. Just comment below under the video, and, uh, you know, we can get those comments read on this show tomorrow yes we and, will <laughs> and now i the favorite part of my show his show our show the dessert with kurt all right it is time for some tasty morsels and we have three guys three guys that made the pro football writers association all nfc team it is one mr foxy himself jack fox the hawk tj hawkinson and the speedy return guy, my man Jamal Sweet Feet Agnew, doing yes, his thing. Like so, um, those three guys made the all pro, I mean, the Pro Football Writers Association all NFC team for 2020 season. Congratulations, guys. You deserve it. Yes, you do. That was, that was great today, Kurt. That was awesome. Um, I would just wanted to tell you about some, uh, some news that's coming up. We mm-hmm. are going to have our membership uh, through YouTube coming up. We're going to give you more details as it becomes available. 
So I'm thinking next week it'll probably roll out. So we'll, we'll, we'll get more to you as it comes. Uh, we're trying to get everything set for you guys so that you can support the channel. And we really appreciate what you do already. Oh my goodness. All the yes. comments, all the, all the love you show us, the views, the things that you do for us. Really appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, you know, we, we do this every day, Monday through Friday, and uh, we're trying to bring the best Lions content for you guys and I just appreciate each and every one of you. All right, definitely. All right, you know who we are, people. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl, your home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. Now, we are now part of the Belly Up Sports family. So for more content for all your sports needs, head over to bellyupsports.com for podcasts and some hard-hitting journalistic articles for all of your favorite sports. Um, for us, you can join us right here on our channel weekdays, 11 a.m. for our premieres of our videos. Chat with us live during the premieres. If you want to get your comments right up front, do a super chat and your comments will be right up front where you want them to be. And join the family. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on the videos. Like the video. Share the videos. All of this helps us get this content to more Lions fans just like yourself. Now it is time for our favorite thing for us. We want you to do one thing for us. Whatever you do in life, you got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. From a man, Jim, right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl and Belly Up Sports, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon. <laughs>